Welcome back. It's 822. Three years ago, the push to legalize medical marijuana was led in part by a man who said, quote, if a Bible believing Presbyterian can get behind it, who can say no? And today, marijuana is all over the news, but we moved on to the debate of legalizing it recreationally. Senator Mike Fulmer is our guest this morning on the Capitol beat, uh, making the trek all the way down from Lebanon uh, in the snow. Thank you so much for joining us uh, this morning, Mike. Uh, we'll get to the medical marijuana in just a second, uh, but as, as we mentioned, recreational marijuana it, it's it's in the news now and 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 uh it's being discussed in a way it hasn't before in pennsylvania are you in favor of full legalization right now no um and uh, we, we don't have our medical program all the way up and running uh, we finally got round two uh done with both the dispensaries and the grower processors uh there's other work that has to be done on 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 our program um with some un intended consequences that come along when something's a Schedule One drug on the federal level. And and this is... Is, is, is the Schedule One aspect of it, I mean, most people I've talked to about this have said, listen, as long as it's Schedule One, it's not going to happen. Is that the main thing that, that's separating well, uh, this, if it goes Schedule Two? Here's what we don't know, all right? We don't know exactly what is buzzed driving, what is driving on the impairment of marijuana. Uh, we can do nanograms based on blood work and things of that nature, but it's all different uh, uh, for individuals. Um, and, and the other aspect of it is, worked really hard to educate folks on the qualities of this plant for medicinal purposes. And my fear with this now talk so soon about legalization, we're now taking this poor plant from where we were trying to take it away from, from the Cheech and Chong, Fast Times, and Richmond High type mentality to where this actually has medicinal practice purposes. But why can't both, in, in that es essence, why can't both exist, especially when a lot of people would say, listen, there's going to be millions upon millions of dollars that could come into the state if, a, uh, recre if marijuana is, is legalized recreationally. Well, first of all, look, uh, in every state that went right from medicinal to recreational, medicinal goes to the sideways. No one talks about it. I'm not saying there isn't any research done in those states. I just got back from Oregon. Well, I shouldn't say just got back, but right before Christmas, I was out in Oregon. And one of the aspects of the real folks that are in, involved in, in, in using this plant as medicine, like about Pennsylvania, is that we're so focused on the medicinal side. So is, is your take then, let's get medical marijuana fully implemented before we start thinking about... Well, let's, let's understand this. But look, we pushed really hard for medicinal because I believe... P patients' lives were at stake, children's lives were at stake, literally. And, and no one's lives is, a, is at stake on recreational, okay? This is, this is just about that. Uh, let's fully understand this plan. Let's get, this, let's get the program un, un, up and running the way we intended it to be. As far as medical marijuana goes, three years into the program now, what still needs to be improved? Well, actually, we, we want to get Chapter 20 done, uh, which is the science side of it. Um, by the way, Penn State just researched, uh, just released their research that yes, cannabis does destroy cancer cells. That's out there, um, and which was great, um, and and such. What we need to do is get Chapter 20 done. We need to get all the grower processors up and running, which they will be uh, sometime uh, by uh, spring and summer of this year. We'll have all the dispensaries up and going, which will help with the pricing because there'll be more competition. I want to do a full 180 to an entirely different topic, and this was a big uh, issue in the uh, Senate last session, and that was um, redistricting. Mm -hmm. It fell kind of in the House before anything was done with it. Uh, how much of that is a focus for uh, the Senate, for, for the, your state government committee uh, going into uh, this year? Well, we released uh, Senate Bill 22, working with uh, Senator Boscola, and that's her bill. And uh, we're, we're going to be running it in committee, and we're moving forward with it, as it was passed by the Senate last year, okay, without so the, the judge. We, okay, so, so the current uh, incarnation of SB 22 does not have the, no. the judge's stuff. No, no. You're, you're laughing. Why? Well, they created a problem. Uh, we might have, I don't know if the House would have picked up on it or not. But that did create a problem. How do you get the House to not, because the big holdup was the House had 500 amendments that they put in. How do you avoid that happening again once again? Well, that's a there? good question. Uh, and, and we're going to uh, push forward 
and um, and uh, and and see what happens. Uh, last question I have for you deals with uh, voting machines. Um, kind kind of falls in line with. Um, redistricting and, and voting and whatnot. But uh, last week, you uh, questioned in a budget hearing why Pennsylvania needed new election uh, voting machines. Well, why? I wasn't quite, look, there's not a judges of election in Pennsylvania that doesn't think that we, we, we need to go into new machines. That was the point. The question is, do we need to do it by 2020, which is going to be a very volatile election, uh, heavy turnout. Uh, it's going to be very passionate, I can only imagine, uh, and such. And, and when you're trying to push in new machines, the fear of the judges of the elections are is that there could be problems. And, anytime, I, and we don't need any problems in a very volatile election. Are there issues with Pennsylvania's voting machines today, no. real quick? Uh, none. I mean, we did not make any of the national news. Florida made the news again. North Carolina made the news again. And so did New York and Ohio. And, and all four of those, what they had in common was paper ballots, by the way. But my point is, no, Pennsylvania didn't. And, and such. Now, there are counties that are moving ahead. And that's fine. They're doing it on their own. Exactly. And, and, and that's fine. But to decertify all the machines and then push this for a 2020 election, I don't see it. Senator Mike Fulmer, a pleasure as always. Thanks for coming down from Lebanon today. Sure, thank Fox you for having me. Yeah, Fox 43 Morning News. We'll be right back.